All right. I think it's time for the news. <laughs> this is going to be weird. This is going to be bread news, cat. All right. All right, here we go. News time, chat. Where's your clap sound effect? I don't know. I, I legitimately don't know what happened to the clan clap sound effect. I like that I'm wearing glasses as well. <laughs> it's a good combination. But, time for the news. We, I feel like we need we need like a good news music. I realize I just used the normal BGM. We should totally, now that I've got more, like, I've had pretty standard, like, scenes for a while. Like, I should probably, I should probably chat, have like a, uh, pretty standard, like, news theme. I think that should be something that we should look into. Um, Alright, here we go. So, as I mentioned, it's going to be a decent amount of news today. Uh, not an insane amount um, in terms of like big spectacle stuff and a bit of ongoing from last week. But, you know, a bit of AAA. Uh, that's kind of where we're feeling this, this time. Um, and there was some stuff I did cull in terms of like talking about... Um, uh, news related to a whole heap of Japanese, uh, uh, I was gonna say live novels, not live novels, light novels, um, uh, and a few other things like that, but, uh, mostly, mostly it's gonna be a little triple A today. So let's jump on in. Team Asobi launches official website and teases most ambitious game yet. So if you guys don't know, Team Asobi is the one that have been, have worked for Sony for quite some time now to make um, Astro's Playroom and uh, the previous Astro's. Um, they are an internal team that does a lot of tech work for um, for, for Sony. And uh, they're very fun. Their newest game is extremely good. And the way that the controller haptic feedbacks was used in that game proved that that controller is extremely, extremely impressive and appropriate for uh, doing, um, just making game dev. And so I'm curious what they will do. Hopefully big things come from them. Sony kind of has taken a step away from funding and helping uh, some developers, in my opinion, for like, uh, I feel like it's one of those things that they probably should be focusing a bit more on it, but they've been stepping away from software again recently and hopefully, and leaning a bit more into the AAA funding. So, um, but we don't know that they can, they can pick some right teams, but yeah, very excited to see what they do. Digimon Adventure Movie 2 and Ghost Game Anime announced. So you guys know I'm a big Digimon fan. Um, I'm literally playing it off screen. You guys can't see. I'm I'm winning the game, guys. I'm winning. Um, but yes, so Adventure 2. So we've just had pretty much the finish up with them going crazy on Adventure 1 and redoing it that many times and the new animes like airing and stuff. Um, it looks like they're going to try and do Ad uh, Adventure 2 now with Davis and the crew um, and the just the second generation of Digimon. The Vmon and things like that, and it's. I'm I'm interested to see what they do. Um, so, uh, we don't really know much about this. It's it's just we get a voiceover of a a Digimon talking about meeting his Digimon master for the first time, um, and it doesn't sound like Davis. It seems almost like a different one because that's not the Digimon I remember. So, but it does look like Davis. So I don't know. Um, but I'm excited as always. I love my Digimon guys um, and I kind of there's come of the, some of these things that I feel like they stick around and get remade and they just come back a little bit stronger um, But I don't think Digimon's ever like f like fallen terribly for me, so We'll see where it goes. Hopefully it's not like that other mo the original uh, Whatever the adventure movies were the original ones the the six of them or whatever it was, they were not good. They were not got movies, good movies. But Kizuna, it was actually really good. I actually really enjoyed that movie. Uh, PlayStation Now adds Nier Automata, Ghost Runner, and Undertale. This is a pretty heavy, like, uh, PlayStation Now. Um, I totally have played all of these and love these games. Um, and I would actually suggest maybe picking up Play PlayStation Now just to play these games alone. Um, and so yeah. 
Uh, this service has not had a lot of great games in my opinion, um, and I think it's a bit expensive for what it is, but uh, these are definitely games that I do think people should check out and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. I forgot to buy tomato paste at the supermarket. I can't go anymore, CJ. You're in lockdown. You're not allowed to leave that house. Better, better order in. Uh, Riot Games opens a new studio in China. Okay, so I kind of wanted to talk about this alongside with some of the Activision Blizzard stuff, but I'll just talk about it here. Um, so, Riot Games. If you guys don't remember, we were talking about lawsuits and how, uh, like, very big deals and what, uh, like, precedents being set. The original precedent for, um, the lawsuits around Activision and Blizzard actually started with Riot and the lawsuits being pushed forward there, but they got pretty, pretty dragged through the mud and slowed down and everything and a lot of scapegoating and a lot of people leaving the company that shouldn't left the company and people that stayed that shouldn't have. Um, and, uh, yeah, looks like the fact that they don't seem to give too much of a shit and have now moved everything over to, uh, this, a studio, well, not moving everything over, they're, they're starting a new studio in China where their demographic is really big, they're really large, um, they're not owned by Tencent, but it's that thing of, like, like, that merger of, um, gaming industry between, uh, um, China and America now is, is becoming a real reality and, uh, will be interesting because if we can't, like if lawsuits can't be handled very well over in America at this stage with AAA companies, as soon as it becomes cross country um, or cross regional, it's uh, gonna be pretty fucked. So um, don't know if this is necessarily a good thing. Um, it is a definitely a time where the riots wanting to expand. They've been wanting to do so for a while and they've also been wanting to make sure that they, uh, I guess, are making new IPs, which they've been trying to do very slowly, but uh, as long as League of Legends continues the way it goes, it's they're pretty a able to coast for some time. Um, I'm slow cooking, so by the time I get there, I'll be too start to la late to start. Oh god. Nah, it's fine. You don't need tomato paste. Just uh, just whack a tomato in there. Niantic reverts goes pandemic changes despite, despite player pushback. So, I think I've actually got two Niantic related ones. I do. Um, so I might grab the other one here. Um, so, if you guys didn't see, um, Niantic, who are meant to be very, like, like for the people sort of thing for when they're um, making any of their changes. Um, Pokemon Go gets you out there, gets you doing stuff. And... For some reason, Niantic has taken it upon themselves that now is the time to revert changes globally around uh, being able to go to particular um, Pokestops and gyms without social distancing. And uh, people weren't happy about that, but they protested and said they shouldn't do it and they've still gone forward. Um, so uh, yeah, people really, really unhappy about this. Um, now a little time has passed. Um, and the response to Niantic's upset, uh, sort of, whoop, that's not the wrong, right article. Uh, hang on, where are we? Here we go. Um, the response by Niantic is that they want to have a task force, um, developed for being able to get involved and uh, make people not necessarily go out and figure out people are being problem people. And it's like, that's not, that's not the appropriate response. I don't think this is the right thing to do. You roll back. Like, I don't know what they're doing internally, but uh, uh, this is pretty much what they said. I appreciate your letter and all your feedback. We hear you, we're humbled by your response, but not every, not every game has such passion, but uh, uh, like, uh, 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 hang on. Uh, We hit your uh, feedback and one change in particular, uh, GameStop and gym interaction. We reverted the interaction from 80 meters back to the original 40 um, because we want people to connect and heal in, re uh, in real places in the real world and visit places that are worth exploring. That's not what they should be saying. However, we heard your input loud and clear, so we address your concerns raised and we're taking the following actions. We are assembling an internal cross-functional team to develop proposals designed to preserve our mission of inspiring people. They haven't rolled back yet. Um, to explore the world and also addressing specific concerns and raids interact uh, raised regarding interaction distance. Um, we uh, share the findings with the task force in the next game session. Uh, Jane's game season change September one 
as part of the process we'll be reaching out to the community they haven't rolled it back like this it's just the fact that they i good you're working on making a task force fine but roll it back you can't you don't do both at the same time that doesn't make any sense you should have already have done this and then worked for that but whatever um it's it's a bit of a dumb thing that's happening um but i don't play pokemon go and i feel like people that probably do play it that are smart enough about it won't be a problem but it does encourage some bad behavior but yeah um nintendo switch posts strong q1 sales um but sales and profits falls so um we have um a sort of a double thing here um we have all the different consoles having very heavy sales we having the companies uh have less games um uh less games being developed basically and put into the system in, out there um that means that sales are going to be a little bit lower and even if they're promoting the new hardware for both like playstation 5 and switch and everything like that um like is a thing it's still going to be slowed down very heavily and it's just it's kind of it's it's just gonna have it be how it be like it's gonna catch up with them the all these profit margins we're bound to catch up um and it won't kill any of them like they're all they'll be doing fine especially at reduced capacity like they're, they're going to have to pay stuff a little bit less because some people won't even be in the office and things like that um so running costs may be down a bit but uh yeah it's just one of those things that was is going to happen um all the companies will be hit by this so uh covid's covid's hit to the entire industry is going to be long that's that's what i'll say from this, this sort of information it makes it hard for people with disability go uh, to go like they used to. I have a few friends in wheelchairs, and I can't get to stops uh, due to stairs and other hazards for them. Yeah, Silver, it's it's. I, I think that's that's the issue with Go. I think Go has like I think it unfortunately is very much made for uh, like it has a lot of assumptions around it, and I think that's my issue with it. I remember when I played it originally, um, especially like. Remember the news when Go first came out and just all these people doing things inappropriately. They Niantic were not ready for a global, like, uh, excited frenzy to go do things inappropriately or appropriately and trying to use the system where it wasn't meant to be. There was lots of, like, faults in the ideas of that, like, game, uh, game design, which, again, they solved that with their previous game. In Ingress, it didn't have those issues. It was weird stuff with Go. Um, that seem to like encourage certain things and um, it's a uh, it's still it sounds to me like not everything has been solved people talk about very positively about go but it does sound like about the design philosophy and how the the higher-ups at least treat that game um, that they still kind of do some inappropriate things and that's why I'm still not completely sold on um, them them doing the right thing a lot of the time <clears throat> Speaking about selling hardware, Playdate sells out 2021 stock in 20 minutes. A console, I'm fairly sure we may have brought this up last week. I still, it still befuddles me that there's, they were able to sell this so hard. It's for a very specific niche of people, but it's like, it's okay um, for like, it only being for niche people. <laughs> hey Storm, how you doing? Um, it's one of those things where the play date was very made for certain individuals and it won't be necessarily a it's not just a gaming console for everyone um but yeah just very curious where it'll go from here that's what that's my big thing the only good thing that go did for me was meet my boyfriend of one year oh really oh that's exciting silver yeah see it's interesting that i find people met each other that way because like i remember when i played go for the very short period i just i did it with my girlfriend and we would just walk around a little bit in our in our township and um We'd see lots of people walking around with it, but it was like never interacting with them. I'm like, I didn't want to go anyway, anywhere near anyone. <laughs> I wasn't, I don't want to talk with people in real life. I fucking love Go. You're playing it right now. Oh my God, Storm. Storm's part of the problem. Storm's walking around infecting people, disobeying laws. But the thing is, it's like Go, Go has got its good elements to it. I think it's just, it's just a very funny thing um, with a lot of that stuff. All right. Are we here? Oh, we might be here, chat. Um, should I hold off a little bit more? Maybe we hold off? Maybe we should jump in, maybe I hold off? I feel like maybe we should jump into it. 
All right. Don't do that yet. Don't jump in. We're going to hold off. What, what, do you, what do you want to talk about, Storm? What's this? Oh, no, we're not. To, we, you want to do this one now. All right, we'll do this one first. All right. We got two Street Fighter news. So we're going to we're going to put on some Street Fighter themes. All right. You guys didn't see this, um, so Fortnite already did a collaboration with Street Fighter, and you have uh, Ryu and um, Chun-Li. Now we have Cammy and Guile. Um, so I have never played Fortnite. I don't want to play Fortnite, and uh, that's, uh, that's okay with me. But it's very funny to see stuff like this. It's now Fortnite has become the crossover crossovers crossover. Like, it's just crossed over for everything. Guys, theme goes with everything. It really does. Um, now, it's it's funny with this because... Cammy actually looks pretty good. I actually will say, Cammy has come out this pretty... Like, she, the style works for her a lot. Um, gonna go with Guile doesn't look like Guile at all. Guile looks like a man wearing, like, a weird wig. <laughs> And he's, it looks like it's just, oh, it's very strange. French fries? I mean, that's appropriate considering what, how the Street Fighter V character models end up coming out. But why is Guile's hair like out like that? It's very weird. Um, <laughs> Guile's hair is not that wide or tall. Like that's like, this man's wearing a tree on his head. He's a mushroom, he's a living mushroom. Guile looks like a shitty Halloween store costume. I know it's so bad, but anyway. Diamond hot for Cammy? Really not. <laughs> really not, CJ. Um, but, um, yeah, like, I don't know what's up with Guile here, but these Crawford crossovers, I have no idea if they work. I don't know if people playing Fortnite are like, heck yeah, I want to play as Guile and Cammy. Like, I don't know, maybe Cammy. I feel like people will play Cammy, but I don't know how many people want to be uh, Mr. America shoot Sonic Waves. Um, I guess might, people might want to be a military man. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's people want. I hear the art for Cammy already. Oh, probably, I'm going to say. Now, I don't know if, what else comes with it, but it does have, like, costumes and stuff. And stickers, I guess. Um, like, I actually like that. That's a good costume for Cammy. Um, and there's weapons. I, there's weapons in Fortnite? I don't know. I don't really understand. Um, but yeah, Cammy Cup. Okay, oh. Uh, yeah. I don't know if there's really much more to say to that. But, more Street Fighter news. Actually, more important Street Fighter news is the final character for the Street Fighter V Championship Edition has been announced. Um, we saw more of Oro and Akira, um, but we have a new character who actually is a throwback character for people who don't know. Um, we have our new character, Luke. Um, now this, this shows off a bit of Aura, a bit of Akira. Um, I won't watch those because we've already we're already seen them. But um, we might we might pause the music here as we check out the new trailer for Luke. What a name! I can't believe this has ended up being his name. <laughs> So we got another Americana guy, but he's an MMA fighter. Like, pretty fucking generic looking, not gonna lie. I, he doesn't really do anything for me. But, if you'll notice, he has little star symbols on his on his uh, wrists. And uh, it turns out, um, this dude has uh, pistons or power or pump, like something comes out. He can, like, air rocket his hands. Um, so, he can do sonic booms. He, he can fire out fist projectiles. Um, and I'm going to say, I actually like his combos. Like, shit like this. He's pretty cool. Um, 
I actually think this character seems pretty cool just in motion. Um, the moves look cool, but uh, that's a pretty fucking lackluster character. And the response to him was pretty like, people weren't too hot for this. But if you guys don't know, Luke apparently is actually a character from a scrapped Street Fighter game from an eternity ago that they've managed to bring back. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess maybe that means he has some inbuilt lore with him to other characters and things like that that we're going to explore. But um, yeah, weird way to end the season and possibly be ending Street Fighter V because I'm fairly sure this is going to be the final one. I can't imagine another season pass for Street Fighter V and I feel like they're hopefully working on Street Fighter VI at this point. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been a long road with Street Fighter V. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it feels like an eternity for me. Um, I kind of feel like this is something where it's like, I was very interested at the start, but then got pushed out pretty quickly with just how much I disliked that game. Um, but, uh, yeah. Holy crap. There's a lot of characters now. So you can get the collector's, uh, is it collector's? What is it called? Um, it is called the Championship Edition, which will have, like, a whole heap of characters, a whole heap of DLC, um, like a lot of content. So if you do want to pick up a fighting game that is extremely fleshed out, Street Fighter V is probably the one, and Street Fighter is like the f series if you just want a baseline fighting game. So there you go. Hopefully not the newest Predator movie. Uh, your nephew wanted to watch the newest Predator movie after he was in Fortnite. Oh no. Your sister refused to show it to him. Probably a good idea. Depends on how young he is. Those movies are horror movies after all. Um, I don't think there's any other Street Fighter news, so I think we'll jump into some serious chat. Luke is probably based off the YouTube influencer Jake Paul. No, he's not. No. No. <laughs> really not. That's very... Whoever wrote that... No, so, okay, Storm. So it's actually confirmed it is Luke. It's not, that doesn't make any sense. So, um, I don't know, have they updated the wiki? Um, so there is, it was confirmed on Twitter by um, one of the developers of, uh, what's his face? Oh, Capcom has confirmed that Street Fighter V character is not the same as the fallen angel introduced in the cancelled game. Interesting. So they've actually confirmed it's not. So there was a tweet. Hang on. Citation needed. I like there's a citation needed, but not a citation needed on the Luke Paul. Uh, like Paul. Oh my god. Jake Logan. Jake Pogan. Logan Paul. Those. I don't give a fuck about them people. I can't believe the internet's fascinated with them. I think that's just. Anyway, I'm not going to go down that hole. Um, uh, the plot line for the new Predator movie is the Predator game that comes to Earth and then to get autism, because um, autumn is, is the next stage of human evolution. What? There's like a dramatic death scene where the movie was... Oh my God, is this real? That's so distasteful. <laughs> wow. That's pretty bad, CJ. <laughs> otherwise, in an otherwise silent theater. Oh my God. Imagine what uh, that would be. I imagine watching that in the cinema. Holy crap. Why would we have sandwich mono? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently that's a... Uh, that was how we were feeling today with the news. Uh, Straubs felt like we needed to be a bit sandwiched up. Welcome in, Shavo, by the way. Are we going to talk about the sick Ariadne Grande Fortnite concert? I can't, Medic. I'll get DMCA'd just by talking about her. And I have no... Yeah, I heard about it, but I have no idea anything about that. I, I, I don't care. I think that's the thing. I, I, I know about things happening a lot of the time. I, sometimes I just don't care. Um, excuse me while I talk to my boyfriend and tell him that aliens will kidnap me because I have autism. Oh no, Silver. Oh gosh. Wow, that's, that's mad. That's so weird, Bread Cat. And you can pre order the play. Uh, I think the Storm, I think the play date pre orders are pretty booked out for a while. I think that they're a, uh, it's a situation where 
Um, you have to go on a pretty big long wait list at the moment. Um, so for 2020, uh, 2022, yeah, it's going to be a uh, pretty long wait list, I'm, I'm fairly sure. All right. Considering how well it's sold, it probably will, uh, it'll be a little while before you can get it. You might get a PlayStation 5 before you get a play date. Let's talk Blizzard Activision. So I, I, instead of putting this at the end, I think I'll just get through these uh, at a brisk, pa brisk pace because we've already talked about a decent amount. Now, this is going to be an ongoing thing. Again, I talked about how big this is going to be and it is fucking huge, some of the stuff that is happening. President J. Allen Brack leaves Blizzard. So if you guys don't know, Brack has been with Blizzard forever. He joined the company in 2006 to work on World of Warcraft. This is back in peak WoW times. Um, and he was appointed executive producer in 2014 and uh, president, uh, vice president in 2018. And he succeeded Mike Moraheim, um, who we'll, we'll talk about uh, Mike uh, at some point. But uh, yeah, seems like uh, J uh, Brack, is, he's been out. It's, it seems like it, it, they've done with him. There's, he's stepped away. I, don't, I think he. I don't know if he's been stepped away or he's been forced out. I'm not quite sure. We haven't got the full details yet, I believe. But um, yeah. The oh, Zinky Dinky. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, Wade. Um, so yeah, it's this lawsuit is taking apart parts of this company very heavily. Um, I don't. I I recognize the name Jen O'Neill and Mike Yabara but I don't know about these people specifically. They're going to be taking over, so I have no idea how this is going to go on from here, but um, they're having a co-ownership for now, at least, um, or over the leadership, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, but it's like, that's, that's, I, we're in a weird scapegoaty, like, shareholdery, aggressive time where this company is going to start getting ripped apart now, that's on the Blizzard side. Activision Blizzard's staff reject the company's choice of law firm. Now, this is for both Activision and Blizzard. Um, employees today sent out a joint letter to the CEO, Bobby Kotek, and leadership denouncing the company's choice for hiring the law firm, Wilma Hale. Now, you remember I said that they're not allowed to have, um, they need to have court appointed um, or state appointed um, uh, companies. It's state approved. I got that wrong. There's state approved um, law firms that are allowed to be representing them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, something that the staff were not happy about. Um, I'm not 100% sure why. Um, I haven't looked into it fully, but it seems to be one of those things that uh, they are not happy about it. And it seems like it's just one of those things where the upper management are just not listening. They're just, they're doing what they want to do. And uh, yeah. So this ball keeps rolling. Um, Activision Blizzard warns financials could be hit by California lawsuit. This is, I, I hate when I see statements like this. This is basically the company saying, hey, look, we're not going to be able to pay our staff as a threat to be able to try and discourage them doing the lawsuit. That's not how this lawsuit's going to work necessarily. Like it's, it's the, a lot of the staff that will be involved be recompensated. Re but the other ones working there, it's like, it's giving them their choice now. And it's like, if something happens, the company is still required by law and American law, if anything did happen to pay their staff and stuff like this. It's just like, the fact that they would even say this to them is just fucking insane to me. Um, like, it, and it comes from the Activision side, it sounds like. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just very, very, very silly that I'm seeing some of this stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, Kotek is uh, doing his doing his best. It seems like their their upper management is definitely doing their best in a sense of trying to uh, keep them in business focus. Bobby Kotek expects Activision Blizzard to become the very best example and other companies to emulate. This is a funny old statement to say. This is very again something that's like very business. Is, you've noticed that the Activision statements have been very cold. Um, and, uh, they're pretty much them stating a lot of this stuff, um, uh, goes in complete opposite to what they've been having as a culture within their, their companies for some time now. And, uh, it's, 
pretty uh, not great for them to well they, it's kind of one of those things that they have to say this stuff like they need to say this stuff because otherwise they're going to have issues with shareholders being like why didn't you do more uh why did you not like uh why why have you not made a statement about this all this stuff and uh but it's it's a little too late you'll find um this is some of the stuff that the it's it doesn't matter what they say here. Um, the court findings will will eat them up, basically. Um, and uh, Kotek is at that top of the rung. And so I just like to point out, by the way, to put any context for stuff that Kotek says. I didn't realize this, but apparently before he joined Activision Blizzard, um, sometime when he was younger, he was actually involved in a direct lawsuit against himself on sexual misconduct, and he was found guilty. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is the man running Activision and they're having a sexual lawsuit against him, uh, against the entire company and he's, he's at the head of the helm. So, yeah, uh, well, I, I don't know, just, it seems very weird that he's, uh, n there's nothing has happened to him just yet. So we'll, we'll see. Curious what will happen to have Kotek himself at this point. Um, Activision Blizzard faces a new lawsuit. I mentioned the shareholders. This time from its investors. The investors are not happy. This is something that's spiraled so far out of control and it's hit the public eye and news cycles so hard that they are in serious, serious trouble here. Because uh, people are going to be pulling out. People are going to be... Uh, not funding them, people are going to sue the shit out of them, which is what's happening here. Apparently, the investors claim that they, uh, Activision Blizzard made false and misleading statements or failed to disclose a number of things, including a lot of the stuff, all this, all the misconduct that's happened and in the, that's in the lawsuits and discoveries. Um, so, holy shit. Uh, there it is. <laughs> this was the inevitable here. Um, because the funny thing is, this is something happening that, like, it's a very weird thing to be able to happen, but in a sense, it happens because um, they are pushed into a corner by all this stuff being found and divulged, and the investors being able to sue them for this. Technically, I, I don't know if they should be allowed to, honestly. This feels like a bit of a funny thing that they should be able to sue over, but it's something where there is a degree of knowledge that the investors and shareholders should already know like there's stuff that probably would have been brought up or rumored and things like that they, there's stuff that they've probably had been brought up before and probably been dismissed by blizzard or activision um and it looks like it's biting him in the ass like it's it's it this is something that's like this is like I was going to say bites the hand that feeds, but it's not. It's it's a scenario where, like, pretty much he who gives the money can take it away. Like, it's... It's... It's a troublesome thing. It's a deal with the devil, in a sense. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> don't know if this is something that will actually go through fully. I think it'll be something where the, uh... I think the state's um, lawsuit will probably be more effective in terms of, like, getting them. But if it doesn't, this one will definitely be waiting here because I don't know if this one will go through if the other one goes through. Like, uh, but yeah, this is, that's, this, it's a can of worms, that's for sure. Oh, and another person has left. Blizzard HR executive, a HR executive. Think about that. Human Resources leaves the company amid harassment lawsuit. Jess uh, Meshunk, Meshuk, Meschuk. Um, again, this is some of the internal staffs. As soon as you start getting a little bit lower and lower, um, I, I don't know who this person is, um, but yeah. So, uh, same employees also share that HR rep said that she was uh, acting like a brat and was told to suck it up in response to a complaint. Hang on. What's this? Right, yeah, so yeah, so it's one of those things. This is pretty bad. I feel so bad for the victims. I know, I know, uh, Straubs. The backhoe has dug their hole so deep that they can smell the fire. I like that, Silver. 
yeah, this is, is this is the thing. Like this is this is a good space where you will see some not just the basic statements of like what is what was happening within the company, but you have these individual complaints or individual statements of people saying this is what happened when I spoke to the HR uh, representative and blah blah blah. Like it's not harassment. He didn't touch you. Like it's there's clearly something wrong with some of the stuff that was saying there. Now I've worked for a big company before and. It's one of those things that HR is a very cold beast, I found. Like, it's meant to be for the people, but a lot of the time I feel like it's very much at a certain size. Once they're managing that many people, it's not for the people, it's for the company. And it's basically, they need to, they're managing the people. And uh, I think when you get to that stage, it's uh, like, it's a bit, it's just scary. Because then it's that thing of like, who do you turn to? So, HR is for the company? Not always, CJ. That's the thing. It, 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 the smaller the company is, the more likely it is for the people. Um, but when it gets to this point, it's it's just... It's it's monstrous just how they can treat people. Um, human resources. It's not... I, I've always hated that. I don't like the term human resources. I never will. And uh, it's a good way to, uh, to make... You as an employee see your employers as a, a other way around. Employer as employees very like as cold devices. It's the safe face. A lot of this is early. Um, it's 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 going to be interesting. I said there's going to be a lot of scapegoating. Um, it began and it's going to continue. And let's see who actually gets hit by this. And uh, surely some of these people can be brought back in. But that's that's how businesses work. Businesses, they they take the responsibility. They'll take this, uh, this the the big slap on the wrist, and then the people can walk free. Like it's it's a weird thing sometimes because direct offenders, like unless unless they get brought in as a a, a individual case, um, I think that they might be able to walk free from some of this shit, which is a bit depressing. Um, but we'll see. But yes, that's a bit of our Activision Blizzard roundup. Um, I won't go in as hard as I did last week, but um, yeah, it's, it's not going to slow down. This, there's going to be a lot more stuff. We're still in a very raw time, a lot of this stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see if uh, other companies can keep up, I guess. Moving on um, into from triple A's to indies. Uh, Indies House Direct Indies Game Showcase set for August 31st. Um, you know me. I like Indies. I like watching showcases. I like seeing a whole heap of what new talent can bring and uh, what some fun creative stuff can come about. And uh, yeah, I'm ready for more uh, showcases. And I think the Indies are probably going to keep us covered for a little bit. Um, just because we've, we've done our big, we've done our big hoo-ha shows for the, for the, uh, for this year. So it's going to be the cool off period as just uh, things coming out and we get revealed little, little things. Little things like this. Uh, Beat from Jet Set Radio returns to Super Monkey Ball Mania. Um, not going to get Super Mon Monkey Ball Mania myself, but I do love me some Jet Set and I think this is very cute. Look at him, he's in a little ball. That is very cute. Um, I also, that means that we're probably going to get Naganuma music in Monkey Ball. Which I don't think we've had Monkey Ball music, uh, not Monkey Ball music, Jet Set Radio music in anything for a little while. I like that the bananas have turned into to paint cans too. Um, strangely enough, this is a pretty good fit and I'm actually surprised we haven't seen this sooner. Um, but yeah. I do love me some Monkey Ball, but I don't think uh, I want to necessarily return to it these days. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, in terms of news, Fuga Melody of Steel CyberConnect's news game finally released. Oh really? Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know which one it is. Memories of Steel. Hmm. This fucking bothers me because Beat looks so out of place. Really? I like him. Do you not like this? I think it looks cool. I actually think this is a good fit. I think it's just nice to see Jet Set Radio, honestly. Um... Not that we'll ever get Jet Set Radio again. By the way, there is a Jet Set Radio indie game in development that is made by the team that made, um, uh... Oh no, what's the name of that game, chat? What's the name of that game that I really like that is a, uh... Uh, oh my god, Storm. It's long because it's Japanese. Oh, I see. Um, Lethal League. 
Um, the the Lethal League team are making um, a new uh, Jet Set Radio like, and they have Nagamuta Numa working on it, which is pretty fucking cool. Which is this one? It's got a kind of that was like a kind of vanillaery sort of look to it. Oh, it's the it's the the furry game. I remember seeing this. Wait, is this Advance Wars? Is this Advance Wars? This looks dope. Oh, the tank moves on its own. Uh, Banana Mania is a remake of the first two. I don't know. That was the thing I was trying to figure out, Storm. I think it's got all of them and then new content. It looks like it's got a lot. You control the children's placement and, uh, and their moods. This is very strange. Like, I, it's, it's one of those, it feels very Japanese-y. I love the art style, though. This feels very inspired. And you can permakill? So it, it's like, it's kind of Fire Emblem. It was funny because I was going to mention it has Fire Emblem vibes to me. Evilly, one of my favorite games of 2021. Hang on, is this already out? Oh, it just came out. Very Mortal Engines? It kind of is, CJ. I don't know if that necessarily is something I would end up picking up, but that, that's pretty cool. I, I appreciate that one for sure. So what was that? That was Fuga, uh, the Mel Melodies of Steel. It's pretty cool. As I mentioned, uh, so the tension tank, as I mentioned, is a gun called the Soul Cannon in boss fights in exchange for a kid's life. That's dark. Man, Japan, Japan used to just do that sometimes. Just, you just do. Um. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Sea Cold Troth, Hellblade, Glavinus, and Bolt Reaver Astalos in Monster Hunter Stories 2. So yes, the new cinema, the new uh, DLC is out. You may have saw me fought the monsters yesterday. We'll fight more of them today. Um, Kolv is actually pretty tough. Um, mostly because of the timer and co-op. Um, I realize that it's going to be frustrating because it means I won't be able to solo it. But the other two I will be able to solo. So I'm not too concerned as uh, doing Hellblade and uh, Bolt Reaver. But... Um, Kolv is uh, pretty tough in terms of uh, needing good timing and uh, having to wait for like copy sort of stuff. Um, also made it a bit tough uh, doing it on stream, I will say that. Um, but new gear, new armor, all that stuff. Uh, very good update to the game. Um, the roadmap up ahead after it has um, Soul Seer, um, uh, uh, Frostcraft, I've got a name, uh, Gamoth, and uh, Oshin Ki Oshiri Kirin, Elder Frost. Um, and then after that is uh, Molten Tigrex and Dread King. So it's like, we've got a lot coming up as well, like for September. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, how this game's going. And uh, hopefully Rise gets some of this love too, at some point. Um, easy trade, one child for the good of the world. Oh my God, CJ. I wish she had her music. I know. I think that's that's something I will say, Silver, is that I think quite a few monsters, I kind of wish that they um, they kind of had more unique themes going on. There's, uh, there's a few monsters I fought where I'm like, oh, it doesn't have their theme. Or it doesn't have a theme relative to, uh, to the generation they're in. Um, technically, the kids do it willingly. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> but um, yeah, Monster Hunter, I do like me some Mon Hun. Nier Reincarnation, another thing. Monster Hunter Nier, that's me. That's me. It's all the things I ever talk about, chat. Nier Reincarnation soundtrack CD will appear in August. I have not played Reincarnation yet other than the demo, and I still really want to play it. I, From what I heard of the soundtrack, it's pretty fucking good. So it makes me very excited to hear what the full soundtrack is when it comes out on CD. I'll probably grab it on Spotify. Um, and uh, yeah, I uh, really want to play this game. We need to play it on stream at some point, chat. Once I once I find some time. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, once I finish going, I'm booting up the game to finish it. Hopefully, oh, how long is it, Storm? 
Going forward, Unity devs will need Unity Pro to publish to consoles. Oh boy. Epic versus Unity. It's so unfair. So Epic being a AAA company, Unity being uh, indie, indie devs for indies. And uh, it struggles. I've, I've spent an insane amount of time with Unity. Um, it's probably the engine I've used the most. And uh, it's uh, got a lot of rough edges. You can do a lot with it, but it's still pretty friggin' rough for a lot of people. And uh, it feels like it's it might be reaching sort of a tenure in a sense with somehow like people are looking at it. It's they really need to they need to make a big change about it. And I don't know if they can with how much money they're probably making. And this might be one of the attempts to try and fix that. Unity going forward will need devs to have Unity to probably publish on consoles. I actually assumed that that was actually a thing because you still need a license for it. Um, but, uh, it's, it's one of those things that's, um, a bit, a bit frustrating just because like, it's already so costly to get onto consoles, um, needing that have as well. I think it's fair though. I don't know. It's, it's a funny thing. It's not like if you had to pay for a license to do mobile dev, then I would have a bit of an issue with that where it's multiversal platforms or PC, but, uh, doing it for console, I think it's fair enough. My game dev? Uh, let's go with X, uh, Ellie. Um, I don't really do anything these days. Um, moving away is how I'd phrase it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's interesting because it is costly to do some of this stuff, especially for if you're a smaller dev. But at the same time, smaller devs generally don't make for consoles, even though you do have a lot of stuff now where um, you find like on Switch, and the Xbox, they're opening up people to be able to make onto platforms like that. But a lot of the time it's uh, making things is probably at the sizes that it is considered costly. You're probably better off looking at platforms such as PC and mobile. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work for them, but hopefully Unity doesn't disappear. But they kind of, I kind of feel like they're in a funny space right now, especially with just how much everyone is in love with what Epic is doing. Epic is making things so easy for everyone um just in terms of development pricing accessibility like there's just so much that they're doing correct that it's it's hard to keep up when you're an indie temp indie developer platform it's very it's a it's a tricky thing <clears throat> um moving on uh ghost of tsushima multiplayer mode is getting a standalone release <laughs> um well <laughs> This is something that I haven't played yet. I actually like Ghost of Tsushima, but I don't like the combat enough for me to want to go play the multiplayer. But supposedly it's really good. To the point that the team has actually decided that it's good enough for it to be a standalone thing. And that's fine. I think that's really cool. I know Taco plays it a lot. Um, I think it has some interesting stuff about it, but uh, yeah. I think, uh, think this will be fun uh, for a lot of people who haven't played Ghost of Tsushima and they like a bit of stealth. Um, well, it's kind of more power fantasy at this point. I feel like it was this particular <laughs> instance of the multiplayer, but you know, I'll wait for the PC port. You might be waiting a while, Storm. <laughs> um, feel like it's going to be, I don't know what the plan is with a lot of that stuff. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I've got a huge backlog. I can wait. I know. I know. That's true. That's definitely true. Speaking of PC though, uh, Apex Legends averaged over 13 million weekly players in its most recent season. This game is getting bigger. I don't know how this is possible, but Apex is not slowing down. It is probably going to become the biggest game at this rate. Um, Apex Legends is massive in all regions of the world, and it has its newest season, adding a whole heap of content and a new character, and people are just in love with this game. The more and more people play this, the more and more it makes other people want to play it. Um, I found the shooting in that game weird. Yeah, I, I think people who ha play a lot more traditional shooters, CJ, um, find modern shooters like Apex a bit weird, um, but it's definitely what the trend is towards modern shooters. Most modern shooters are ending up what Apex is kind of like. Um, and. Probably for a good reason, because it's a, uh, this game is very easy to play. It's very accessible for a lot of people, but the upper ceiling for, like, play skill is crazy. Zigzagoon, welcome on in. Thank you for the raid. How was stream? What are we doing? 
Bug Fables, the everlasting sap sapling. Oh. 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 Okay, you deserved that, buddy. <laughs> I like you playing Bug Fables. You killed a but you killed a bug on screen. I do like me some Ori. Ori's really fun. How was streaming? I need to finish that too. I literally don't know what Bug Fables is. It's Fables, but you're a bug. It's Fable, but you're a bug. But yeah, Apex is going to continue to be big, and I think it's just going to keep getting bigger. It's just, it's just so accessible for so many people, and it's, yeah, it's just like the killer app. It's the one. Speaking about killer apps, Pokemon. Pop Team Epic Creator designed Pokemon goods featuring Pikachu Idol Group. These are pretty funny. So again, every now and then I'll throw in a merch thing. Um, I don't suggest people buying merch half the time when I talk about it, but um, check it. These are very uh, cute. <laughs> uh, very silly. And it's funny because I feel like I thought Pop Team Epic had run its course, but I guess, uh, guess not just yet. And uh, fairly sure these are only available in Japan though, so. If you do want any of the stuff, you might have to order them in. Or he had too many feels for me to handle. Oh, Zigzagood. Ori's very good. I, both Ori games are fantastic. I absolutely love them. They are, they are those games where it's like, I'm very glad I finally got around to playing them. And I think they were very good stream games as well. <clears throat> you should play Fuga and then if you like feels, I do like me some feels. I like some heavy shit. Um... Oh, is that Bug Fables? Did that, how long ago did Bug Fables come out? All right, almost through the news, guys. Almost there. Um, home Focus Home Interactive acquires. D uh, is it Dotomo? Dotomo? Dot emu? Dot emu? Dot emu? Dotomo? I'm not sure how you say this company's name, but anyway. So if you guys don't know, um, uh. They are the company who made Streets of Rage and they're working on Windjammers 2. Which, by the way, I'm still very excited for Windjammers 2 for, to eventually come out. I don't think it... Windjammers 2 hasn't come out, right? It did come out. Wait, hang on, when did this game came out and I wasn't paying attention? How did I miss this? Or is this the one that people weren't too hot on? Or needed more content? I don't actually remember now. Yeah, coming soon. Yeah, what? hang on, What? why did it say... I'm very confused. Why does it say coming soon, but it said here that it was initially released in 2022, 2020. What's happening? I'm very confused. I might have to look in the Windjammer situation. But anyway, Home Focus buying them out is probably a good thing because they were uh, like indie. Now they're going to become triple, uh, double A and hopefully they can work on bigger, bigger, pro bigger better projects because their art style is really good. People are very in love with what Streets of Rage 4 became. And um, yeah. Resurrecting IPs, which is good. Maybe 2020 was the plan, but it was delayed. That probably makes sense. I'm fairly sure Windjam has just kept getting delayed. That was the weird thing. Uh, but yeah. I'm not going to shut about Nazi killing simulator four-year-old furries for a while. That's that's Storm's thing right now. It's, it's, it's moved from, we've moved on from SMT. Um, but yeah. I, I think this is a good thing. I think th this is the kind of buyout or like uh, publisher agreements and things like that. I think this is the stuff that you kind of want to see though. Because that's that's just helping each other basically. Uh, Metroid Dread teaser focus on a mysterious new society. I haven't seen this trailer chat, so I'm actually excited. So this is this is probably um this is probably the thing I'm most excited for. Uh, this stream uh, this stream, this news cycle is um Metroid. Metroid news. Oh, like ruins. She moves her head all weird. This game looks like it adds a lot more story to the Metroid universe. There's a war. What? The suit, does the suit go crazy? Chat, I think the suit goes crazy. Huh. It's interesting new design for the for the for the suit. 
Like, because this doesn't look like it's the other ones from, like, Zero Suit and things. Not Zero Suit, from, um, Zero Mission and things. So, it's, so, so it looks like the Chozo were fighting something? Was there an internal struggle in the Chozo? So it's them versus the Metroids. Wait. Does this mean we're- I- does this mean we're getting, like, the reason why the Chozo fucked up and created the Metroids? We might- we might be getting some truths here. That's crazy. I wasn't expecting real lore in, uh, in the Metroid. Huh. Look, she's in the other suit here. Or it is just the suit, it's not Samus necessarily. Huh. There's another flash. Hang on, I'm, I'm tempted to go frame by frame here. I haven't done this in a while. Chat, what's the button to go frame by frame? Is it dot? Is it... Hang on, what, what is it? I never remember. Is it... Chat, how do we go frame by frame in, in uh, YouTube? Can't catch the frame. There's a frame there I saw. Saw it. I saw it, chat. It's somewhere here. There's a s- there. Oh, there we go! Okay, so it does have a link to Zero Suit then. Uh, Zero Mission, not Zero Suit. Alright, cool, 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 cool. Hmm. I'm gonna ponder that. I might have to- I might have to do some Lord- Lord Junkie, uh, stuff after stream. But that's pretty cool, that was a good trailer. Um. I was not expecting a whole heap of uh, lore stuff in a trailer for Metroid, but uh, I think that's a, not a bad idea. Uh, moving on. Something I was excited for, but I didn't end up playing much just because I ended up falling off the wagon for it was um, Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. Um, it actually registered 9 million players worldwide. That's a lot of players, and I, I, as much as I know Fantasy Star is pretty beloved, this still seems bonkers to me, this amount of players. Um, not sure it's going to have the retention, because the initial me playing it felt good, but it kind of felt like a bad version of Blade and Soul. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. It's Fantasy Star. It, it seems to have staying power for some reason. Um, I, I like Fantasy Star Online 2 normal, a lot. I haven't got to post game in New Genesis, but having to go from the ground up again is very, uh, it's very slow. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to return to it. I think with a group of people, because otherwise I think it's going to be a bit of a slog. But I built this PC to play it, and I never got to. Oh no, Storm! Shut up and take my money. They will. They'll take it, Zig. Don't you worry. They'll take all your money. Nintendo, that is. Oh, shoot. Um, this is actually the last article. It was actually meant to go with the other articles for Activision. This was supposed to be the big one for it. I was talking about how the lawsuit is actually causing them to get impacted by um, shareholders and things like that. Um, it's actually being, and the investors suing them. Sponsors drop Overwatch League after harassment lawsuit. So, um, Esports League Coca-Cola says it will take a step back to reassess the support. Like, Coca-Cola, Kellogg's, and the State Farm told the paper. So this is, these are various brands and all these, all these branding is being removed from the Overwatch Esports Leagues. Which, by the way, I thought they were in the, I thought they were on the road to being shut down anyway. I thought, I thought, um, uh, I thought that Blizzard weren't really too happy with where that was going for Overwatch. Especially the fact that Overwatch 2 still is not in, like, finished development. Um, maybe they needed to cool off or something, but, um, yeah, uh, that's a pretty big hit. They're not making money off them, so, you know. I played all the Metroid games except Other M and a couple of, um, DS and 3DS games. I didn't like, I didn't play the original either or the rematch. They're all pretty good. I think, I think the Metroid games are like, I, I don't really want to play Metroid 1 and 2 again, really. Um, but, like... They, they, they're very fun. Um, I think Metroidvanias are just fun. Metroidvanias are just like, I, it's hard for me to imagine people disliking those games. Cause I think they're just, 
It's the reason why I have such a fondness for like Zelda's and things like that, is getting things and progressing forward, but uh, yeah. I never click with Metroid, I only try the Prime demo, oh my god. I feel like Prime's a bit different though, CJ. Prime's being is a third person shooter, a first person shooter. Um, it's a little bit different. It's still it's still got the Metroidvania to it, but it's it's just it's a different vibe uh, being right in it. Um, then the first one was uh, the first one when Nintendo gave it to me. I apologize for the 3DS. <laughs> Wait, what? Gave it to me to apologize for the 3DS release. Metroid is a series I want to get to. I've gotten in. I want to get into, but I haven't. I do suggest it. I think. Uh, I think the the DS uh, the DS and the uh, GBA ones are, are worth checking out if you haven't played any. Um, all I play, I, I, man, Zigzagoon playing um, other M is not not a good way to have gone into the series. But uh, yeah, they're, they're definitely very fun. But yeah, back to back to the Overwatch stuff. Yeah, this is just this is again this should have been paired with the other news, but it's like it's. It is what it is. This pretty much is going to just, this is going to eat at uh, Activision and Blizzard. They are in a troubled space. That's for dang sure. Um, we're gonna see. This is gonna continue for a little while now. We'll probably have this revisit a few times. It'll be, it's pretty much we're entering the realm of the lawsuit of the, the quarter. What lawsuit are we gonna talk about this quarter of the year? Nintendo dropped the price of the 3DS by $100 shortly after getting the release way back. And for one of those, uh, and for those who of us port one early, we've got a bunch of old games. Oh, CJ, I didn't realize that. Interesting. GBA and NES games. Uh, yeah, yeah, you should totally check them out. They're very good. If you haven't, hang on. I'll, I'll, there was a timeline. I saw there was like Metroid Dread timeline. I saw. I think someone made a timeline. Uh, is it here? I don't really like this one. This one probably represents it a bit better. Um, meh, 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 why is this so large? What the heck? So we have Metroid on NES, Metroid, and then Metroid 2, uh, Samus Returns on the GB. And then you have Super Metroid on the, this is why I say it's not really, I don't think these two are necessarily required to play, but uh, Super Metroid is extremely good. Metroid Fusion is very good. Um, so that's that one we saw with the suit. You can see here in the suit there. Um, I realized I said I was seeing Zero Mission. I meant uh, Fusion. And then you have Metroid Dread. They don't have the one with Zero Mission. Hang on. Hmm. Because you don't want to look at this. This is the events of actual the actual timeline. Um, Metroid series. What's this? What have you what have you linked? I tried to draw Kirby from memory and this stuff's hard to draw. Why have you dropped CJ? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Thank you, CJ. Feet? Very cursed feet. Hang on. There we go. Wait, hang on, what? No, what? I want series. Series? Here we go. So, we have Metroid, Metroid uh, Samus Returns, Super Metroid, Metroid Prime, Metroid Fusion, Metroid Zero Mission, also on the GBA, Metroid Prime 2, Prime Pinball <laughs> Hunters, uh, Hunters doesn't count, uh, Prime 3, Prime Trilogy, that's just a re-release, Other M, which we don't talk about, Federation Force, which we don't care about. Uh, Samus Returns, um, which is the remake of Metroid 2. So if you wanted to play Metroid 2, you, uh, you'd you play the Metroid Samus Returns, I think. Um, which is, I think it was pretty good. And then Metroid Dread. And then Metroid Prime 4 is coming out someday. Someday. Federation Force wasn't bad. Yeah, but it's not really Metroid though. <laughs> hey Forts, how you doing? Catbread, that's me. Cat bread at the moment. Opens a bottle of bleach. No, you don't need that medic. You 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 consume the f the foot Kirby. You need foot Kirby in your life. <clears throat> Alright, hang on. I need a drink. Oh, 
What's this stone? <clears throat> I feel like we're out of news territory and we're now in weird place. Storm, you've got a problem. You've got a problem. All right. That's the news. I think we got through all the news. And it's almost two o'clock, so we actually have reached a good time. So, um, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it for today. It, like, it's it was a weird news sort of time. Like, there's a bit of everything in that one, honestly. Um, a lot of business. And I think uh, it'll probably be the lawsuits. Hopefully, we'll talk a little bit less about the Activision Blizzard stuff next time. But uh, it's uh, definitely going to be something that's going to be a big thing for a little while. So, yeah, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, actually want to get some a little bit more food in me. And then uh, we will uh, do some stories, too. So we might actually do some co-op stories, too. So if you guys want to do some stories, um, I'll probably be doing some runs of... Uh, Hellblade and Astalos um, and maybe some Colve. I don't know how I want to handle the Colve situation, but I kind of want to do those two at least just to see each of them. And then uh, we might do a uh, just some general runs. I might do some Egu runs. I might get some gear. We'll, we'll figure it out. I kind of want to go make a Azure Rathalos gear, but um, that's kind of that's kind of the plans for that game. And then. Uh, I think by the end of this week, we can take a little bit of a break from Stories 2, and then we will probably switch over to Scarlet Nexus. I'm off to bed now. Ten minutes to midnight. Night, Zigzagoon. Thank you for the raid. You have a good sleep. Uh, you good, Forts? I had a, I got my butter knife, butterfly knife came in. Is it shaped like a butterfly? Um, opening a, a and closing and spinning moves. <laughs> you've Somehow you've lost it. Oh, you, as in you learned, you've learned three tricks, but you didn't lose the knife. I thought you meant as in you lost the knife. See, good work, Forts. Um, all right, well, we're going to take a quick break now and um, we're going to do some uh, some stories too. So sit tight, y'all. I'll be back very shortly. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm very hungry again for some reason. Be right back. <laughs> 